my name is Ashley. I'm from State of the Heart Hospice. I'm one of the grief support specialists and music therapists. Um, and in a minute, we will go around and share your information. Tell me who you are, who you've lost, what brought you to this group. Um, just to recover some of the ground rules for the group, um, everything that's said in the group stays in the group. And I will hold that expectation for you as well as for you for me. I won't go share your stories. And um, The group is also not a place to suggest different things for other people. Everybody's a little bit different. And so whether it's worked for you, that's great. Share that it, this is what worked for me, not you should do this in those kinds of situations. Um, tonight we'll be talking about the holidays, how Thanksgiving was just a few days ago, and then maybe your anxieties or anticipation, anticipations for Christmas. Um, I have a couple packets here for you. And Debbie also has, um, uh, she has a packet too, a, a story that she found. And these um, papers can be found either here or through email for requests. The holidays are naturally a more difficult time when you're experiencing a loss because you are more, it's a time to be with people you love or, you know, you might have purchased toys or things for your dogs or for your animals and so you know you're going to sense that loss kind of all over the place because um, we know that pets really become your family and so it's not having a family member there. Um, so when they normally bring togetherness, sharing and thanksgiving or you know love you can feel sadness, loss and emptiness really. Where's, where's the point in the holiday then? So, the first thing is that love does not end with loss, or end with death. Since love does not end with death, holidays may, may result in a renewed sense of personal grief. A feeling of loss unlike that experience of the routine of daily living. Society encourages you to join in the holiday spirit, but all around you the sounds, sights, and smells trigger memories of the one you love who has died. And so, you might see dogs with at breakfast with Santa, or animals in costumes for Christmas or for Halloween, anything that you might see that you're like, oh, I used to do that, or, oh, this is so good, I'm not doing that. Um, or even you might be shopping at Walmart and you see the pet aisle with all the new toys for Christmas and it's like, oh, I'm not buying those, I'm not going there this year, all those reminders. Um, no simple guidelines exist that will take the hurt away that you're feeling. We hope, however, the following suggestions will help with better cope with your grief during this joyful yet painful time of the year. So, he really encourages you to talk about your grief. And for some people, talking isn't the way to process it. But that's what he really encourages, whether it's you're talking about your sadness or you're sharing memories that you're thinking of um, that might bring you happiness. Um, because ignoring it and pushing it aside internally isn't going to help it heal and go away. Sometimes we describe grief as um, a wound and it needs a band-aid. And so if you had a cut on your arm, you'd put a band-aid on it. You have to protect it from the germs. And so just like grief is an internal wound, you might have to protect it at some point. But if you continue to let it fester, and it's going to get infected and then you're going to explode with emotions. And so finding friends and relatives who will listen and allow you to talk and not to really talk and not downplay your situation or to judge you on it. It'll help you feel understood and then to continue to process. The second one is to be tolerant of your physical and psychological limits. Um, you may be feeling more tired, um, exhausted at the end of the day when normally you're just tired, or, you know. Your low energy can have you feeling down, um, but you know, listen to what your body is telling you in that situation. If you're tired, if you're tired, take it easy. If you're supposed to go Christmas caroling and you're just exhausted, then don't go Christmas caroling. If you're supposed to watch a Hallmark movie but you just want to go to bed, go to bed. You need to listen to what your body is telling you. Um, continuing to do things that you're supposed to be doing during the holidays or things you feel obligated to while you're feeling down is just going to make it worse for you. You're going to end up feeling exhausted or even resenting the holidays in general. 
The third one is to eliminate unnecessary stress. So you may already feel stress. Um, grief kind of heightens stress levels and different different things. So don't overextend yourself. Um, don't tell somebody you can help them put up their Christmas tree and their house decorations and then help your neighbor make cookies and then help your mom and dad make all the food and, you know, that already is ridiculous, but then when you're feeling emotionally drained and just painful inside, doing all that will just over overkill it for you. Um, at the same point, avoid isolating yourself, but set aside time for yourself to heal um, or to have that time for you to... You know, when I'm with everybody, I'm going to try and be happy and be present, but if I need to take five minutes to go cry, I'm going to, and that's okay. Um, also in here, realize that merely keeping busy won't distract you from your grief, but may actually increase stress and postpone the need to talk out thoughts and feelings related to your grief. So when you are ready to talk to somebody and you, when you do feel the need to talk, talk, don't just, oh, I'm fine, I'll just keep going, I'll just keep making cookies, I'll just... Put on my Christmas tree. I'll just hang up all the lights that I can find. <laughs> um, the next one, be with supporting and comforting people. Identify those friends and relatives who understand that the holiday season can increase your sense of loss and who will allow you to talk openly about your feelings. Um, I know for you, Thanksgiving was hard. You know, it's a, it's a rough time of year, and so... Surrounding yourself with people who understand, whether they understand the loss of a parent or they understand the sadness that comes with Thanksgiving for you or that time of you know, November. Um, and then, you know, thinking about people who know what it's like to lose a pet or know what it's like to um, have a loss during the holidays or even have that presence gone from their life, being with them. Um, and being around people who accept your feelings, whether they are happy or sad, you know. If you're happy and someone around you is questioning why you're happy, you, you lost your job, why are you, why are you in such good mood, I would be miserable. Well, that's how you would be, this is how I'm coping today, you know. Talk about the person or the pet who has died. Um, include the name in the holiday conversation. Um, if you're able to talk candidly, other people are more likely to recognize your need to remember that the pet or the special person who is an important part of your life. And so, instead of avoiding it and making it the elephant in the room, talking about, do you remember that time that my dog ate the turkey? Do you remember that time when they jumped up on the table and started eating everything while we all had our backs turned? Um, or that time we were all here and the dog chased the toy under the tree and knocked it all over and broke every single bulb on the tree. All those things. Talking about those memories and also the loss if you feel like you need to. Doing what's right for you during the holidays um, is important. So your friends and relatives, and they might try to suggest things that will be good for you. Well, you know, just, just as people always have suggestions and ideas for you, you have to do what works for you. Um, you know, you might go along with it to, oh, I need to get out of the house, I'll just do this. But if you really don't want to, then don't do it. You don't have to do anything. Um, discuss it with somebody. This is my plan for Christmas. I'm going to put up a Christmas tree, but that's it. I'm not, or I'm going to wrap presents, but I'm not putting up a tree. I'm going to hang one light up outside, and that's what I'm going to do, and it's all fine. Um, and have somebody on your side who is going to encourage you and support you and when other people make you feel bad about it or when they make you feel like you should be doing more, have that person who knows what you really are intending to do for the holiday. Plan ahead for family gatherings. Um, decide what traditions you want to keep and what you want to change. Um, you might start new traditions of going out to eat for Christmas instead of cooking a big meal or um, not putting up a Christmas tree or putting up two Christmas trees instead of one if you're feeling very ambitious and um, there's nowhere that says you have to keep going if you've lost a significant loss in your life whether it's your pet or a person or you know you are allowed to create new memories this is, this is a new time of life for you um, the 
this one is embrace your treasure of memories and so to continue to think about either your holiday memories with, with your pet or with the person and what you used to do and remembering all those times um, and sharing them with other people whether it's friends who didn't know um, or people who have also had a loss sharing those times that made you laugh or really aggravated you and you know you can share all those things um, and if you know thinking back on those even if it's a good memory and you are overcome with sadness at that point it's okay to cry and to not hold it in not choke it down you know releasing those tears is a, is a way to release emotion and release pain um, you know you you are allowed to allow that you're allowed to do that for yourself Renew your resources for living. Spend time thinking about the meaning and purpose of your life. The death of someone loved created opportunities for taking inventory of your life, past, present, and future. The combination of a holiday and a loss naturally results in looking inward and assessing in your individual situation. Make the best use of this time and to define the positive things that in life that surround you. So, finding that new meaning. What am I going to do now? What can I do to honor this person that I lost or this pet that I lost? How can I memorialize them over the holidays? And how can I now continue on? The last one is express your faith. And so, thinking about your faith and what it means. In the packet that Debbie handed out, it talks about, you know, thinking about in your mind, in your faith, where do you think your dogs are now? Where do you think your animals are at this point? What are they doing for the holidays? You know, if they're in, in a doggy heaven, if they're in a different kind of afterlife, you know, what are they doing for the holidays? And um, You're allowed to have your own set of beliefs and whether what you want to think about and going there. Um, here's some practical ideas for Christmas. Um, don't expect too much from yourself. So don't, if you normally make the Christmas meal and you're able to do all that, and this year you just aren't feeling up to it, that's okay. Don't expect yourself to do it just because you have before. Don't apologize for your feelings or your tears. Don't be alone. Invite somebody over. Try arranging a short visit for the first time. So maybe you enjoy your quiet time for yourself, but we are human. We need that social interaction just as you know, your dog might have been your social interaction. So even if it's, you just want somebody to come over to watch a half hour show with you, 30 minutes at the first time, that would be okay. When you and your family get together, remember it's okay to talk about the happy memories you have in Christmas past and of your loved one. There's no need to feel guilty if you are having a good time. If you find yourself smiling, laughing, playing games, that's okay. You don't have to feel sad all the time. You may cry for no particular reason at all, or you may feel like you need to cry, and all those are okay. Attend a candlelight service or Christmas carol sing-along. Sometimes churches in the area put on a, um, a ceremony or a, a remembrance mass or something, um, and you can go to those and do one of those things, Christmas carols. You don't have to do Christmas cards this year. If your Christmas card always was a picture of you and your dog, or your dog under the tree or in a Santa hat and you just don't feel like doing that this year, that is okay. Um, journal. Write down your thoughts and feelings. Sometimes talking isn't the most conventional way for you, so write them down. Spend time reading the Word of God if you feel that that's what you want to do. Work on a special scrapbook or photo album. It's all about your loved ones who you've lost. And so, Creating your own, you may have gotten some from someone else, but creating your own favorite pictures or um, those kinds of things. Put some Christmas music on and sing. So if you don't like Christmas music, maybe put on your favorite other kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to overdo it. Take a child shopping for their parents' gifts. Oh, yeah. Talk to a trusted friend and allow yourself to cry. I know the packet that Debbie had also has different things, different ways to memorialize it. And, um, you know, you can do something nice for somebody else's pet. You have uh, your neighbor's dog you're close to, or your your sister, or a family member, or your parents. Um, buy, buy their dog a gift, and, you know, you couldn't buy a gift for your dog this year, but you wanted to, to pay it forward. Um... 
the last page, um, we'll just kind of go over this and then I think we're probably about out of time. But these are just different ways to memorialize. Um, find a poinsettia for your home as a living memorial to your loved one. You might put a picture up of your dog beside it or your own candle. Um, having that, that plant there that you can nurture too. Um, light a candle that is specially selected to represent your loved one. Um, it will provide a symbol of their presence, the flicker of the flame. Decorate a small tree with ornaments that remember your loved one. Maybe this year um, you'll get a, a dog ornament and you can put that on the tree. <laughs> Hang a stocking for your pet or your loved one and have family members fill it with special memories or special personality traits. Um, buy a special ornament that is for your for your loved one. So um, maybe having a special one made with their their lifespan on it, living. Um, donate to a special interest for your in honor of your loved one. Um, so if maybe giving back to uh, a different charity or uh, an event or somewhere that your dog loves to go. Maybe it was to the park, so you want to give back to the community, or um, somewhere that you would take your dog or things like that. Buy a living tree and plant it in your yard. Mm -hmm. Decorate a small memorial tree for your kids' bedroom. Donate flowers to your church in memory of your loved ones. You might feel silly if it's in honor of a pet, or you might think that people will judge you, but you know, if that's your way of memorializing them, then I think that's perfect. Um, you can listen to favorite music. If I'm not sure if most animals do. I know um, some some do. They like certain types, or they we. You turn music on for them while they're home by themselves, and so you might listen to that again. Um, show home movies or look through old pictures of, of your dogs and re relive those memories. Um, you might have a video of when your puppy came home for the first time or um, playing ball in the yard or something like that. Share, watch those and allow yourself to, to cry or to really relive those memories. Um, Adopt, it says here, a local family who you can purchase gifts for, or, you know, someone else's dog or their animal. 